What I want to do in this video is think about exponents in a slightly different way that will be useful for different contexts and also go through a lot more examples. So in the last video we saw that taking something to an exponent means multiplying that number that many times. So if I had the number negative 2 and I want to raise it to the third power, this literally means taking three negative 2s. So this literally means taking three negative 2s. So negative 2, negative 2, and negative 2 and then multiplying them, and then multiplying them. So what's this going to be? Well, let's see, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and then positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So this would be equal to, this would be equal to negative 8. Now another way of thinking about exponents, instead of saying you're just taking three negative twos and multiplying, and this is a completely reasonable way of viewing it, you could also view it as this is the, this is the number of times you're going to multiply this number times one. So you could completely view this as being equal to, so you're going to start with a one, and you're going to multiply one times negative two three times. So this is times negative two times negative two times times negative two. So clearly these are the same number. Here we just took this and we're just multiplying it by one. So you're still, you're still going to get negative eight. And this might be a slightly more useful idea to, to get an intuition for exponents, especially when you start taking things to the one or zero power. So let's think about that a little bit. What is two, what is positive two to the, based on this definition, to the zero power going to be equal to? to the zero power going to be equal to. Well, we just said, this says how many times are you going to multiply one times this number? So this literally says, I'm going to take a one, I'm going to take a one, and I'm going to multiply it by two zero times. Well, if I'm going to multiply it by two zero times, that means I'm just left with the one. So two to the zero power is going to be equal to one. And actually, any non-zero number to the zero power is one by that same rationale. And I'll make another video that will also give a little bit more intuition on there. That might seem very counterintuitive, but it's based on one way of thinking about it, is thinking of an exponent as this. And this will also make sense if we start thinking of what two to the first power is. So two, two to the first power. So let's go to this, this definition we just gave of the exponent. We always start with a one, and we multiply it by the two one time. So two is going to be one. We're only going to multiply it by the two. I'll use this for multiplication. I'll use a dot. We're only going to multiply it by two one time. So one times two, well, that's clearly just going to be equal to two. And any number to the first power is just going to be equal to that number. And then we can go from there, and you'll, of course, see the pattern. If we say what two squared is, two squared, well, based on this definition, we start with a one, and we multiply it by two, two times. So times two, times two is going to be equal to four. And we've seen this before. You go to two to the third, two to the third power. You start with a one, start with a one, and then multiply it by two three times. So times two, times two, times two, this is going to give us positive, positive eight. And you probably see a pattern here. Every time we multiply by two, or every time I should say we raise two to a, a one more power, we are multiplying by two. Notice this. You, to go from two to the zero to two to the one, we multiplied, we multiplied by two. I'll use a little x for the multiplication symbol now, the little cross. And then to go from two to the first power to two to the second power, we multiply by two, we multiply by two again. And that makes complete sense because this is literally telling us how many times are we going to take this number and uh, how many times are we going to take one and multiply it by this number. And so when you go from two to the second power to two to the third, you're multiplying by two, multiplying by two one more time. And this is another intuition of why something to the zero power is equal to one. If you were to go backwards, if say we didn't know what two to the zero power is and we were just trying to figure out what would make sense. Well, when we go from two to the third power to two to the second, we'd be dividing by two. We're going from eight to four. Then we divide by two again to go from two to the second to two to the first. 
And then maybe it seems like we should just divide by 2 again for, to, from going from 2 to the first to 2 to the 0. And that would give us 1.